kid, loan me a pump, huh? Heads of government face firing squad in South America, extra! Wife and three children strangled before paralyzed mother-in-law. Man, slaughter's wife and three children. Get your extra. Read all about it, extra. Here you are, lady. Plane from Tokyo crashes. Plane from Tokyo down in flames, extra. No survivors in plane disaster, extra. But there are really good books here. They've hardly been used. Well, they look practically new. Old books only. Uh, I haven't read this one myself yet. Excuse me. Uh, just a moment, young man. Where did you find this paper? Oh, that? I've got stacks of them at home. Hundreds. Ah, the Excelsior Ballet. Grandpa's great love. What do you do with these? Don't tell me that people buy them. Buy them? Of course Pardon. they... But are you really interested in these old-time periodicals? Do they go back to your father's time? Of course, even to Grandpa. Then go right home, pack them up, and bring them here. I'll give you 3,000 years sight unseen. Okay, it's a deal. Right. Excelsior Ballet. <laughs> ah, it isn't as funny as you might think, my friend. Laugh all you want, but our grandfathers with their funny clothes and their long beards, they had something to give the world. Look at their accomplishments. Eh? The Suez Canal, the Montanesio Tunnel, the Telegraph, Electric Light, Trains, Ocean Line. the Express Machine. That too. They did people a lot of good. And that thing, no. We invented that and uh, a lot of other useless junk uh, like it. Uh, extra, extra, read all about the new superatomic bomb. They had some good ideas in the old days. Uh, don't forget it was a century of education. And, uh, Excelsior, and why not? The sky was the limit. And historical, allegorical ballet. Ah, the old civic theater. of characters. The spirit of light. Interesting, isn't she? The spirit of civilization. Even more interesting. But look at her. Poor thing in chains. Do you know why? Because the spirit of obscurantism has enslaved her and with his evil power he obstructs the march of progress. Look! He points to the Montseny. Monarch of the Alpine peaks with its charms and glaciers dividing the peoples of two sister nations, Italy and France. Ah, but little does he know that deep under the mountain, a panting, sweating army of workers at the service of civilization dig the mighty tunnel that will unite Italian and Frenchmen. Eagerly, each side listens for the sound of the other, but all is silent. The hour before the dawn is always the darkest. Aha! You see despair in their hearts. Defeat is certain, and I shall reign eternally over men's minds. You shall be my prisoner and slave, and none shall free you from your fetters forever. <laughs> Heave ho! Alexander Volta, the genius who in periwig and lace cuffs first harnessed electric power in the service of mankind. He too, assailed by doubts and driven to despair, had his moment of darkness when the evil genius seemed triumphant. But lo, the spirit of light is here. Try again. A bit more salt this time. You shall see. Ah, success! You have triumphed! Oh, bliss! Excelsior! 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 He! Oh! Deep below the Alps, too, the last barriers fell.
And now the telegraph. Now nation shall speak to nation. And all our brothers, basking in the light of civilization. Our grandfather's invented express coffee machines, but as far as any comedy was concerned, nothing. It means that... Uh, that what? That they had no real sense uh, of humor. Why, if the present generation only realized how ridiculous they are. <laughs> here, sit down here. Thank you. <laughs> Don't mess with me. The only thing left to us is a bit of good manners, at least, among older people like ourselves. Now, let's see, the first one that turns up. Uh, here, read this. I was waiting at the station at Treviglio. She'd spent September with her family in the country and was due to return to Milan, alone. She'd said she would write to her husband announcing her arrival for the following day. That would give us 15 hours together. 15 hours in paradise with an angel. Excuse huh? me, the train's coming now. Ah, finally. Well, two minutes isn't much to exactly. delay. After all, what's two minutes? Two minutes on the way. Stand back, please, stand back. <laughs> Attention! The train is arriving! The train has arrived! Mathilde, my own, I'm coming, Mathilde! Camillo! Dearest. I'm most obliged. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure, Mathilde. Have a good trip. Hope to see you again. Come on, hurry up, pick up the luggage. Darling, I'm so happy. <laughs> Ah, oh, precious little thing. What a hat. I can't tell you what a time I've had. Oh, excuse me. The afternoon train for Milan is at 4.32, isn't it? Oh, madam, that's the freight train. You want the passenger train that goes out at 2.32. At 2.32? <laughs> Thanks. Not at all. But, but no, Mathilde, you surely don't mean to tell me. Tullio gets back to Milan this evening. He telegraphed. And you know, I really don't think we should be imprudent. Oh, it's so hot. And so we no longer have our 15 hours. We have to count the minutes. My jewel. We must spend them all in paradise. Oh, but you're beautiful. And how well that dress becomes you. <laughs> My love in the country, I never put it on without a sigh of desire oh. for you. And I imagine it created quite a stir in the country. Well, I don't know. It's possible. Oh, with this kind of an outfit. Well, what's wrong with this outfit? Nothing, but I... Well, what's the matter with it? Oh, nothing. But it doesn't leave very much to the imagination. Oh, but it's absolutely the latest. I know. But we have to have a little modesty, don't we? Follow the fashion, but don't overtake it. You saw yourself how that fellow back there was affected. Who? Oh. That what's his name on the train. The, oh, it's very kind of you. Well, it was very kind of him. 
Well, of course. It's not very hard to guess why, eh? What's not hard to guess why? Well... You mean to say I look brazen, is that it? Oh, no, but... Uh, thank you. Oh, no, Matilda, don't. Uh. I'm sorry, my love, but you know that where you're concerned, I'm as fierce as a jealous tiger. A wicked one. My dear. Treating me so. Forgive me. Oh, and I desired you so much. I know, I'm a brute. Yes, you are. Yeah. Oh, no, not the moustache. Kiss me. Oh, yes. Get up, Socrates. Come on, we're in a hurry. <sighs> How beautiful everything is. Oh, it's beautiful because you are here. You know, I have an urge to sing that's uncontrollable. To sing? Oh, oh my oh. little nightingale. I have an urge Darling. to kiss the back of your neck and from this moment. And from this moment? I don't know that perfume, do I? No, it's called Original Sin. My husband found it in Paris. Ah. Why ah? Oh, nothing. And does your husband like this Original Sin? I suppose so. He paid for it. And you wear it just to please him. And why not? No reason. But that you're saturated in the scent of another man and you can't. He's not me. another man. He's my husband, and what's more, I am not saturated. You're a monster. Very well, enough. Enough. I won't say a word. Not another word. What's the time? I asked, if you please, what's the time? Ah. Thank you. And you're not interested in what the time is? How much has gone past? How much there is left? No. Splendid. My good man, that church up there is a sanctuary, isn't it? Yes, madam, the sanctuary of Caravaggio. Hmm. I understand it's interesting. Interesting? It's famous all over the world. Are there many visitors who come to see it? Many? Millions. On a hot day, the place is swarming with people. They come all the way from Milan. I suppose now you want to go to the sanctuary, huh? An hour to get there, an hour to get back. Time to visit it. Wonderful idea. Should be. It's yours. Oh, heaven help me. Here I am trembling at your side. And what do you think about a sanctuary? I swear to you, Camilo, I no, never... No, no, you're quite right. A wonderful idea. We'll go there at once. But I don't want to well, go... Well, now I do. Drive to the sanctuary. Oh, no way. Understand? <laughs> According to the existing legends and superstition, on May the 26th, in the year of our Lord, 1432, a young peasant woman was crying at the ill treatment to which her husband subjected her in one of his fits of jealousy. At that point, the Virgin appeared to comfort her, and on the spot where the Virgin stood, a beautiful fountain appeared, and near it, the Duke Filippo Maria had the first church built, which was consecrated in 1451. In 1568, Carlo Borromeo, who was then archbishop, had a sanctuary built on the site of the primitive church, which by this time was falling into disrepair. And now, if you would like to see the actual gates cast by the great Carmonati... Thank you, thank you. But we won't keep you from your work. No, that's right. But thank it really you. has been terribly exciting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> what time did the station master say the train went? 2.32? Oh, yes, but I'll go with the other. Amongst the freight? It'll be worth it. Oh, I only wish you could, my love, but they won't let you on the train. Well, then, how much time is there? How much time? Three hours, ten minutes, and you're going to have that ten minutes to drive us to the hotel. Ten minutes? What do you think this is, a velocipede? Why not? It's downhill. Just for that reason. Can't you see how many bends there are? Well... Ten minutes. Why, you need more than that even if you go by the shortcut. Well, all right, let's go by the shortcut. My quadruped can't go by the shortcut. It's ridiculous. What do you think I got here, a blooming mountain goat? Never mind. We'll walk, then. Yes, let's walk. We'll meet you at the hotel. All right. Where's my luggage? Don't worry, ma'am. We leave at 2.32. Be ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my love. <laughs> Will you always love me as so? As long as I live, always, always. Swear to me, dearest. I swear it. Darling mine, oh, and swear to me as well that you'll never, never love another man. But I have no need to swear, uh, it, I my beg, love. swear to me. But you know you're the whole of my life, you big silly boy. No, but swear to no, me. No, I won't. You're being very really naughty. Oh, <laughs> Come Mathilde. On. Mathilde. Come, my own. Mathilde, I entreat you. This is no time for entreaties. We only have three hours left. Come on. <laughs> oh, how I ran. Oh, my little gazelle. We're completely mad, Camilo. Oh, yes, completely. Oh, impatient one. Wait a moment. Oh, but the moments are precious to me. And can't you think of anything else that's precious to you? <laughs> yes. Something pounding. I don't hear anything. It's the waiter. I don't care. Oh, you're a reckless boy. Come in. No, wait a minute. Excuse oh, me. Just a minute. Dear. 
Come in. Uh, put it down there. Very well, sir. Thank you, sir. Just leave it. I'll attend to it myself. Oh, I couldn't do that, sir. Would you like something a little stronger? No, nothing, thank nothing. you. Now, if you would like an exciting souvenir of the sanctuary, we have some downstairs in the hotel. Perhaps later, before I leave. Excellent. Hmm? Oh, how stupid of me. Excuse uh, me. No, only one. The place is mine. <laughs> All right, then, take your time. Little blessed souvenirs, very artistic. I said later on, dash it. All right. There's plenty of time, isn't there? And are you pleased with the room? Delighted. And the flowers? Deliriously. And if there's anything you need, just call. Alone at last, free, far from the world, in short, paradise. Come here, go away. Oh, just let me watch you, beloved. You wash so divine. <laughs> Flatterer. <laughs> Lovable, kissable. Bring me a little tonic water, please. Ah, uh, yes. Kissable. <laughs> oh, Matilde, swear oh, not it. Not again. That you'll please. never, ever again love anyone else but me. Pledge yourself. Pledge yourself. Oh, what a thirst. Oh. Are you happy? Mm. <laughs> Madly. Oh, but Matilda. Mm -hmm. Another one, please. Of course. Ah, heavens, Camillo. You know I'm still out of breath. Drink this, darling. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. I suddenly feel tired. So dead, ah, dead tired. Angel. Come, Camillo, my love. <laughs> <laughs> you know you've been very wicked. You've wasted so much time, so many embraces. Well, it was all your fault. Mine? You mean yours, my no, jewel? No, treasure yours, too. Oh. I've been silly, naughty, egotistical, but I've desired you so breath of my life. And you didn't even want to swear to me. Oh, but darling, can't you see how absurd it is to be jealous of my well, husband? It's absurd, <laughs> grotesque, everything you can think of. But listen, Matilde, when one really loves as I love... Mm. When one really loves as you love, what happens? Oh, shameful, shameful. The curtains, I beg of you, please draw the curtains. Oh, right away, soul of mine. Oh, my eyes hurt so. I feel really tired. It's all this light. Ah, oh, leave that to me, my love. I know exactly how to deal with light. Exactly. Yes, my precious. Aren't you tired, Camilo? Oh, exhausted, my own. <laughs> Although, listen, Mathilde. There's something you must tell me. You absolutely must tell me. Listen well and reflect before you reply. If your husband died... Oh, gracious, why? Poor don't Julia. worry, it's a hypothetical question. He's bursting with health, unfortunately. But if he were to die... Oh, really? And I were to die... But it's a massacre, a tragedy no, of killing let off me everyone. Finish. Let me finish, I beg you. If he were to die, and I died, would you remarry? Well, I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. The situation just never occurred to me. But, well, no. I don't think so. Don't, don't think, think so. so. Don't think so. Ha! Well, that's a fine thing. What do you want me to say? I don't think so. In fact, no. Positively not. No, 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 no. And why not? Why not? Well, I mean, you ought to be able to guess why not. I should be broken-hearted. At losing me or your husband? At losing both of you. Both of us. Oh, Paris. Oh, no, listen, Camillo. I swear to you that my love is eternal. It will go on burning long after the last breath has left your body. Come here to me. Even if all you have left to cherish is a memory. Even then. No, you'd get over it. Oh, no. Yes, you would. You'd get over it. Oh. And after all, why not? Oh. You should rebuild and try to forget Oh, me. no. I couldn't even live you without could. you. You could. You're beautiful and young, and you have no right to renounce your life like this. But you are, my love. But what could you do? All alone in the world. It's possible you'd find a man who is worthy of you. No. Perhaps elderly, but not repulsive. Charming. Distinguished. Rich. Hmm. Who'd worship the ground you walked on. And you'd end up by loving him, too. Who knows? It could happen. It could happen? Hmm. Oh. Oh, Mathilde, how can you bear to say these things to me? What things? That you don't love me and you're going to remarry. Darling, 
I didn't say anything. It's horrible, horrible. Ah, oh, and I'm willing to betray a man who's worthy of all your respect oh. because I don't love you. Poor Tulio. Poor Tulio. And I endanger my very life. And what's even worse, my eyes. All right, then swear to me. Oh, don't start again. But you have to, you have to. Oh, very well, then. I swear it, I swear it, I swear it. Promise me that you won't marry another man. I promise you. And that you'll love no other man but me. No, no one but you. What are you going to swear? On my life. No, on mine. All right, on yours. No, on both our lives. Yes, yes, on both our lives. Repeat after me. Yes. I swear, I swear it on my, my life, life and, and on yours and on both our lives. Both our lives. Oh, oh, you've been so oh, naughty and so cruel. Oh, darling, yes, it's true, but hush, hush, no. No, no, not on this time. What is it? It's the driver. If you expect to catch the 232, you'll have to hurry. And we'll have to drive like fury all the way to the station to make it. Oh, good heavens, the train. Oh, no, it can't be possible. Mathilde. Oh, where are my clothes? Mathilde. Come on, Harry. Yes. My hat. Oh, the hat. Where's my hat? Here it is. But if you want to... Want to what? Mathilde, you can go later. But you said they wouldn't let me on the freight train. No, not with the freight train, but as we planned by the first train tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't possibly. It's absolutely out of the question. I really wouldn't know what to say. Oh, come along, quick, quick, help me. Oh, my hat pins. Where are my hat pins? Have you seen them? Mathilde. Oh, no, dear, not now. Help me to find the hat pins, please. Oh. Hold it, hold it. What do you mean, hold it? How Harry. can I hold it? Oh, what's the matter with you? The well won't stop for two minutes. No, sir, neither will my railroad. Oh, my hat box. Oh, here you are. It's coming. All aboard. Permit me, madam. Hurry up. No, no, we can manage. What's my pleasure. Ah, I thought it would be. Here, give me that. That'll be three liras, what sir. What are you getting excited about? I want my three liras. Wait a minute, you idiot. The train's leaving That's now. why I'm excited. Goodbye, darling. Adieu, my love. We must be together again soon, my rosebud, but oh, soon, yes, soon. darling, just as soon as we possibly Already can. Already, Like madam. today, but not Thank like today. You. If you see what I mean, when? When? Oh, I don't know. When I go on my vacation next year, I suppose. Next year? Uh, the train is leaving, All right, sir. all right. Farewell, my heart. The train has departed. I beg your pardon. Not at all. Delightful. Those were the days. Everybody calm and contented. And what about this? Ah, Quarry by De Amicis. But what Italian hasn't read it? Or oh, as boys, maybe. You should read it again now to appreciate it. You remember the Sardinian drummer boy? Come on, man, take cover. Come around, hurry up on the double. Hurry up. What are you doing here, boy? Get inside. Shut the door. All right, move fast. Hey, soldier. What is it? Your music bag. Put it here. Come on. Get a move on. Beg pardon, Captain, sir. This is no job for you. Leave that to the men. Yes, sir. Get a move on, you. Come on, come on. Hurry up with those sacks. Step lively. Look where you're going, you blockhead. Come on, look sharp. You can help to load the guns. You know how? Yes, sir. Good for you. Come on, then, over there. Sergeants? Yes, sir. Assemble the second platoon here right away. Yes, sir. Take your platoon! Lieutenant! Yes, Hold in! You take command down here. Yes, sir. Don't waste any ammunition. Very good, sir. These fools thought that bayonets alone would do the job. Fine intelligence they have at headquarters. You idiot. Do you think this winner's a private box at the opera? Take pardon, sir. Upstairs, on the double. One moment. What are your orders, Captain? Barricade all the windows on this side. All right, come on, all of you. Follow me! You're the medic, aren't you? Yes, sir. Bring the wounded oh, in here. Do the best you on. can. What do you Very think good, this sir. Is a you too. Come with me. You! Put that table over there in the corner. Keep away from that window, you fool. I need a lot of soldiers around here, not scared of heroes. Three! Keep down! You trying to get yourself killed? Put that mattress inside there on the double pull out all of you. Good heavens, what are you doing? Listen, lady, you can help too. You're Italians, aren't you? These men are fighting and dying for you. Did you hear that? Go on. Take it away. Come with me. Captain, we're three women. We can look after the wounded. Very well. Are the windows on this side? Yes, sir, Captain. Only one. Over there. Sergeant! Sir? Over here. Yes, sir. Hey, yes, sir! Give me a hand with that. Devil, take it. 
They've infiltrated our rear and cut us off. There are two companies of them, sir. I hid before going into the wood and was able to count at least six officers. And there may be more. Headquarters report only a platoon. We're forced to ask the reserves immediately. Yes, sir. Get me a reliable runner. A drummer boy. Ah, what an idea. He's no use. I need a man. But Captain Sir, a boy is quicker. He makes a small target. The outcome of the whole battle depends upon this position. Will he understand that? That boy's got guts, sir. But he's only a boy, a Sardinian. You say he's got guts. But before you can judge a man's guts, you've got to know him well. Don't waste any ammunition. Make every shot count. Come on, boy! Powder! Powder! Hurry up! Oh, oh man, taking it easy at Villa Front. Can you see them? Get back there, you fool. Do you think this one is a batch of the opera? Get out of there, you'll be killed. He's a Sardinian. He doesn't even understand Italian. Huh. And yet they say that Italy's all one. Drummer, come here. Come on down. Now, let's see what you can do, eh? Come along to the captain. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Has the captain decided what to do? To send the drummer to ask for reinforcements. Go up and report to the captain. Lieutenant. Lieutenant! Where's the captain? The captain, where is he? Drummer, come here. Come on, my boy. Sergeant says you're a brave little fellow, is that true? Yes, sir. Then take this note. Put it in your pocket and take off your pack. Now, I want you to take a good grip on this rope, go out of the window, and let yourself down the slope to the bottom. Get up there. See there? When you reach those trees, turn to the right. Up to that point, you have nothing to worry about but your legs. There's not a single Austrian. Yes, sir, Captain. Captain, sir, Lieutenant Landy has been badly hit, and a dozen men are out of action. It's time to regroup the men. You take command, get everyone upstairs, and increase the rate of fire. Yes, sir. All right, boy? Yes, sir. Listen to me carefully. Keep your ears and your eyes open, because this is not child's play. Where did I tell you to turn when you get down there? To the right of those trees, Captain, sir. I go around by the enemy flank, and then I bear to the right again until I get around behind them. Yes, that's right. Don't let them see you. They shan't see me, sir. Then I take the message to our men who are down there at Villa Franca. Give it to the first officer you see at battalion headquarters. Now run. Trust me, I'll do my best, sir. Thank you, Captain. Remember to keep your head down. Don't worry, sir. And the Lord be with you. Careful now. Don't let them see you. You can have faith in me, Captain, sir. All the men are upstairs now, sir. They have a clear field of fire. The Austrians are pinned down. Little fool. You see? He can't even run. Oh, he must have stumbled in a hole. There. Now he's turned. Good. What did you say about Lieutenant Landy? He was killed, sir. A bullet through the heart. Don't be a fool. This is no time to be afraid. Courage, lad. Yes, sir, Captain. Men, we must not let Custoza fall. Leave it to us, Captain. Stupid idiots. Didn't he realize they'll see him? But he's got to run, Captain. I lost him. Where's he now? Down there. Can't you see? Can't you see where he's got to? There he is, going around behind the Austrian lines. Take care of him. Quick. Sergeants, come here, quickly. Yes, sir. Look down there. That's him, isn't it? Do you see him? Where? Have you gone blind, too? There he is, to the left, by that clump of bushes. There, there on the side of the hill. Oh, yes. Now I do. Look how he's running. He's a brave boy, isn't he? Really, a fine soldier. A brave boy, indeed. A silly fool running like that out in the open. Does he want to get himself killed? Look, he stopped. What does he think he's doing? No, he's taking cover, sir. Look, they're firing at him now. Achtung! Alle men are here! Schnell! Captain, sir, 
They cease firing. They demand our immediate surrender. Don't answer them. Yes, sir. Get out of there. Run, boy. Kill yourself, but run. Anyhow, he did his duty. But they can't possibly have hit him. He was undercover. Keep firing to the last round. Surrender! Or you'll all be destroyed! But not Italy! Take that, Austrian. A nice chestnut for your supper. Forwards! Forwards! The beds are full of dying. Downstairs, have the women bring them down. Go on. Yes, sir. Courage, Pierre Montese. That goes without saying. There, you're all Italians. Yes, yes sir. sir. Go on, men. Today, we are molding Italy. Italy at any price. Yes, Sergeant. Courage, my boy. Courage. Give me a hand with him. Cavalry is attacking the rear. We'll make a bayonet charge. Sergeant, open the door. Yes, sir. Long live Italy! Yes, Italy. 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 The day ended with a victory for the Italians. But on the following day, the Italian army was overcome by the overwhelming superiority of the Austrian numbers and was obliged to retreat to the river Micho. Halt! At ease. Is the hospital in that church? Yes, sir. Take him over there. Very good, sir. How is he? You mean the one who had a bullet wound here? 
Yeah, it doesn't look very pretty right now, but in another 30 or 40 days, he'll be back with the company. Well, tell him that his captain came to see how he was. Yes, sir. Captain. Sergeant. Mm. Sergeant. Mm. The captain. Captain. Bravo. You did your duty. I did what I was able. Thank you, Captain. You see, drummer boy, what did I tell you? The Captain really did come to say bravo to you. No. I didn't even know you were here. Oh, well, I couldn't run properly all doubled up. They saw me right away. Then you've been wounded, too? Wounded? I'll say it was. Just take a look, Captain. A very sad case. This lake could easily have been saved if he hadn't smashed it up running out of the way he did. But he's a brave lad, I can tell you that. Not a sound out of him, not a tear. I was proud to be an Italian myself when I amputated. That's a fine breed, on my word. What are you doing, Captain? I'm only a captain. You are a hero. De Amicis. Ah, De Amicis. Yes, sir. A great man. Perhaps today's boys wouldn't understand it, but I remember when our teacher read it to us in school, how the tears flowed. Has it come in? He's the one with the picture of Katozzi. Who's he? The one who murdered his grandmother? Yeah, he hit her over the head with a hammer. Yes, here it is. A whole paper of pictures. There he is. What did I tell you? We went to school together. No kidding. Well, now, isn't that wonderful? And you, is your grandmother still alive? <laughs> But why don't you read that splendid article on Katotzi? Hmm? Because I wrote it myself. Ah, I see. So you're a... A writer. Articles, current events? Sometimes. Well, then you should write an article on... Let me see about uh, this event. But sit down, please, sit down. Ah, Fuccini. Yes, Fuccini. An intriguing little episode. A matter of principle. <laughs> You just touch it and see what happens. Uh, that's a good one, considering I saw it first. But I saw it from up there while it was on its way down. Well, what do you know? I saw it from the big tree by the bridge. Then you must have seen it before it even appeared. Yes, sir, I did, you fathead, because if you remember, I served in the cavalry. And if you didn't know it, I'll tell you that when a horse slows and catches its breath, it's a sure sign it's about to... Well, anyway, I got no time to waste. Let's get down to business. We'll toss for it. Nah, then. nah, nothing doing. First come, first served. Now, look, I only said it because we went to school together, mm. and I'm godfather to your daughter, and I've always oh, tried to be no, a good... Oh, no, you don't. This isn't the kind of thing I gamble with. Then let's share it. That's a great idea. What can I do with a half? This is just what I need. I've been looking for something like this for a week. i got to fertilize my orchard. But for your orchard, cow manure would do the job just as well. Bravo. I can see you know all about agriculture. Cow manure is good for your beans, but this kind would burn them up. And where am I supposed to get cow manure from? Uh, and does the honorable gentleman suggest I supply him with same? <laughs> I suggest we stop arguing. Same here. I'll take it myself. you got nothing to carry. Yeah, what about this hat? I'm taking it. You do, and I'll tear the height off you. You gangster. Coward. Fathead. Dirty anarchist. Take your hands off me. You put down that shovel. No. Yes. No. I... Look at it. Think of the waste. The dirty so-and-so. I... Uh, break that uh, out. Cut it out. Uh, Stop it. Stop it, you two. You stole it, you dirty thief. Stole it. You ate it. Ate it. Let me at him. Let me at him. Stop it. Stop it. Stop Stop it. Are you crazy? Just look at yourselves. A fine state you're in. Bravo. Why don't you take a look at him? Fixed him proper, didn't I? You saw. Battered and bleeding so he wouldn't even be recognized by his own mother. Well, you're a fine couple of citizens. You are. What's all the rumpus about, anyway? About Maria? Maria. Hey. Out of here. Let me at him. What about Maria? Maria? Who would ever think of fighting over that one? 
Well, then over Madalena. No, we're not fighting over Madalena. It's not over a woman at all. Well, but if it's not over a woman, what are you murdering each other for? A matter of principle. Principle? Yes, principle. Horrifying results with the new superatomic bomb, extra. Can I help you, sir? Got any thrillers? Come again? Good thrillers, murders, detectives, police investigation. Yes, here's one. And this one, a Danish prince unravels family murder. Hamlet. Yes, know it? I seem to know the name. Ah, read it, 200 layer. Oh. But the story's sensational. They all die in the end. I see. Hey, you've no idea what a fellow he is, this Danish prince. He kills his stepfather and his stepfather's friend. His mother takes poison and the young girl drowns. In the end, he gets killed himself. A regular butcher shop. Everyone's dead. Everyone. Oh, yes, of course. Now I remember Hamlet. I saw the film. No, no, I know the story already. Anything else? No. <laughs> You're pretty. If you like this, I'll give it to you, huh? An idol. Let me have the matches. All the women and the young ones had better stand back because I won't answer for the consequences. We don't come here. Is that the sort of game to play? What'll they be up to next? Careful of your eyes, all of you. We don't. Did you hear? We don't. Come here now, unless you want me to tell your mother. Just look at the state you got yourself into. Listen to me, I'm talking to you, child. I simply won't have this naughtiness. I've lost my cufflink. What have you lost? Have you lost something? Yes, my gold cufflink. Maman, il a perdu le bouton de sa chemise. Puis je l'ai Naturellement, ma chérie. Je vais vous aider aussi. What's your name? My name's Matilda Elizabeth. But everyone says it's much too long, so they call me Feely. <laughs> I've wanted to play with you for ever so long, but you always run away. I do. No, I don't. Le voilà, n'est-ce pas? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Pas de quoi, mon petit. Weasel! Weasel! Grandpa! Here I am. <laughs> Alors, va, Philly, ton professeur t'attend. Au revoir, mon petit. What's your name? Guido. Guido? Hmm? Is that where you live? Do you know something? From my house, I can see a tiny little bit of your garden. You can? Which is your house? That one next door to you. We only took it for a month, though. Then we're going away. Are you? Yes, but I'll see you, Guido. Yes, I'll see you. Uh, Philly. Goodbye, Philly. What a perfectly beautiful child. She's as pretty as a picture. Who is she? I don't know. I don't think she's so pretty. Oh, darling, and what would you know about such a thing? The profile is classic. Quite. <laughs> You'll learn. And it keeps changing colors. Good morning. Good morning. Look. Oh, look, it's a pattern. I've never seen so many colors before. Why does your mummy always call you Measle? No, not Measle. Weasel. It sounds silly, doesn't it? I used to say Weasel instead of Guido, and it stuck to me. <laughs> you weren't born here, were you? I'm half French. Really? Do you know what my mummy said? No, what did your mummy say? She said you're very pretty. 
Don't you think I'm pretty? No, I wouldn't say you're pretty. No, you're beautiful. I'm too little and they won't play with me. Come on. We've got to let him play too. All right. And he's on my side. When they make him prisoner, I've got to set him free. You know, my mummy says that you're quite handsome as well, and that your face is very intelligent. I don't know. I suppose all men are handsome. Anyway, that's what everybody says, don't they? But not handsome the way you are. Oh, Feely, you should see the pattern I've got. It's umpteen times better than the others. Hold it up. Don't spoil it. If we don't breathe, it'll stay the same. There you are. Look. Well, why don't you take Grandpa's address from... No, no, no. It's better like this. The work can start after you've gone away for the holiday. I must say, I don't trust Brioski. He's a man I'd never trust. Why don't we take another engineer, then? Italy's full of engineers. Oh, there's nothing wrong with Brioski. I just don't trust him. And besides, we've been waiting long enough already. No, I've decided. The work is to start as soon as you've left for the country. When? When are we going to the country? Come along now. Hurry up, Weasel. You haven't eaten anything yet. I was just thinking, wouldn't it be better to put off going until after the house is done up? I really don't see the point of going there at all. It'll be simply overrun by workmen, and it's difficult enough squeezing in four extra people. Four? But why four? Then tell your niece not to come. You can't walk round the house without falling over her husband. And this year there's a little one. That doesn't count. Count or not, a newborn baby makes more noise than five grown-ups. And the nursemaid. This year, my dear, we'll also be entertaining the nursemaid's husband. The nursemaid hasn't got a husband. Why, is she a widow? No, but for once your dear sister Madalena did something sensible. She came across a young girl who got herself mixed up with a young man. And no sooner did he hear that there was a little one on the way, than he left her in the lurch. Uh. But, Grandpa, how could the nursemaid have a baby without being married? <laughs> Guido! Laura, since when have children been allowed to intrude in the conversation of grown-ups? You better get on with your dinner, dear, not say such silly things. But I only... Come, come, boy. Will you eat or won't you eat? I'm not hungry. Not hungry? Since when do children say I'm not hungry? It's the time of the year. He tired himself out in the gardens. Come here. Let me see your tongue. He's acting just as if he got a touch of the sun today. Were you rushing about or something? Ah, but the boy has only just been eating. You can't possibly tell whether his stomach is upset from his tongue. You may go. We'll have no further discussion. Tomorrow morning, a good dose of castor oil. But I feel very well. Mm? I didn't eat because I wasn't very hungry. I feel fine now. Laura? Since when have children been allowed to contradict their elders? To bed, boy. <laughs> Good night, youngster. Good night, Grandpa. Good night, darling. I'll come and tuck you up in a minute. Madam has arrived. Please, oh, okay. Good evening, madam. How are we today? Have you lost your tongue? Good evening, Auntie you? You've Adela. been feeling poorly. Tummy upset, eh? Time you was with salt of the country. Good evening, Good everyone. Evening, Good How are you, are you? child? I've never seen you act this way. You must be in dreamland. Come on, straight to bed. I'm talking to you. Whatever's come over you this evening. Feely. Feely. Weasel. Mama. What is it? You'll catch your death of cold without your slippers. Mama, I'm not ill, I promise. Oh, you'll be better tomorrow, darling. We'll tell Teresa to give you only half a spoonful, shall we? Now jump into bed. Yes. Wait a second. Your feet. I'm not afraid of casserole. I just don't want to stay indoors when I feel well. And all because Papa lost his temper when I asked how a nursemaid could have a baby without Oh, darling, it wasn't that, it wasn't that. You're so pale, that's all. And your father but was listen, only... listen, Mama, I can't understand how you could have a baby if it's not the sort of thing to talk about. Uh... One of these days when you're big, there's time to understand such things, huh? But Come on. why is it you can't tell me now what makes a little baby and how it comes? 
What can I say? It's all very simple. Now and again, it happens a gentleman and lady like one another. Then you say they're in love. And when they kiss, sometimes, but not always, they get a little one. Nine, nine now, darling. Then why must I always kiss my cousin when she comes to see us? Oh, why not? It would be different if you were in love with one another. Now to sleep, Guido. We've had enough chatter for one night, huh? Mama. What is it? Nothing. Laura! Coming, dear! Good night, Weasel. Good night, Mama. Now go to sleep, dear. And tomorrow you'll go out all the same and we'll go and buy some lovely new clothes. And now, Master Guido, I'll not tell you again. You're nice and clean, your hair is brushed, and you'll stay like that. Don't you worry, Teresa. I told you for the last time. But I'm all right now. Do you know, these three days I've been so worried and then last night I dreamt you were throwing flowers to me. So you didn't come out in the garden all those three days? No. Do you know, I like very much the way I dressed up today. Reminds me of Lord Byron. Ah. And who is Lord Byron? A lovely young man, a poet from England, who did wonderful things for Greece. We've got a picture of him in our house and you'll see he looks just like you when you come there. Do you know, today is my birthday. I'll be ten years old at six tonight. Mummy says it's six sharp. Why didn't you say so? I could have bought you some beautiful flowers. You wait here. I'll go and get some. No, you can't go. You've got to come with me because Mama wants to speak to you. Mama, come on. Here he is, Mama. Good morning, madam. Bonjour, auntie. Es tu libre ce soir? You see, Philip was born today. Son anniversaire. And at six, we drink a little toast with a glass of champagne. And we also have a cake. You will come, n'est-ce pas? It is very kind of you, but may I go and ask my parents whether I can? Sûrement, mon petit, va demander. Go and ask them. Feel you good with him, dear. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. You heard your mother say she wouldn't think of it. Out to dinner at your age. Who mentioned eating dinner? I said it was a party. It's a friend of mine's birthday. Don't answer back. Dinner or no dinner, your mother says, unless your father gives his permission, Little children can't go gadding about visiting people we don't know who are probably But I dreadful. told you, they're the people who live in the house next door, and they're nice. When your mother says no, that's the end of it. For all I know, Papa will get in late tonight, and then there'll be no chance to ask him. As far as I'm concerned, that's that. And don't get dirty. Fee, <laughs> Fee, you mustn't cry. I so wanted you to come. And I. Because I like you so much. It makes me angry when those grown-ups won't let their children do the littlest thing. When we can't stop them from doing anything. Feely, Feely, please don't cry. Because when you cry, it sets me off crying too. I don't think boys ought to cry. Besides, I make a funny noise when I cry. I'll come. Go and tell your mother. I'll be there before six. Cross your heart. Cross my heart before six o'clock. So long as you promise you won't cry anymore. Dress yourself, or do I have to do it for you? Teresa, please listen. Come on, get along with you. It's no use thinking I'll go away. I warn you.
the long bar, huh? Oh, yes, ma'am. One half for each. Thank you. Let's see, Mama. By this time in our house, we've had dinner. Do you think they'll shout at you? Oh, worse. Worse? But it doesn't matter. Why haven't you told me whether you like my new dress? My grandma sent it specially for today. Beautiful, it's beautiful. But now I must leave, I'll climb the wall. But before I go, I've got something to tell you. Oh, what a big loss of fireflies. Are there as many of them in your garden? Say goodnight to your mother. No, wait. Mama? Oui, je s'en va. Tu t'en vas, mon petit? It is late. Can anyone go with you? No, thank you. I'm used to being alone. Vraiment? Alors, au revoir. Thank you, Au revoir. Till tomorrow. Shall I see in the gardens? At nine o'clock. Then I'll go there at nine, too. At nine, then. Don't be late. Don't you be late, either. He's still a baby. My mind is made up, Laura. We know she'll settle this little matter with his father. But watch your temper. Oh, the rascal! We found him, madam. The young gentleman's come in. Where is he? Ah, the prodigal returns. Now we'll see. Nando, remember your blood pressure. Jerry Meyer, don't stand there gaping, man. Do something. I could have sworn I saw him. Oh, I'm seeing things. Just think that a child of ours should start misbehaving so young. Oh. Weedo. Weasel kids. Won't you come out? We've got some... Who said he was here? I can't find him. It's high and low, sir. He's vanished into thin air. Can anyone explain this rumpus? Have you seen Guido? Oh, why? What's happened? No one can find him. He's disappeared. Jeremiah. dear, what an age to be going on the loose, the naughty boy. Cherchez la femme, eh? It's that baby girl, the pretty one. Yes, madam. Did you see him going out again? So that's it. Meeting women and merrymaking at his age. Wait till I lay my hands on him. The cat's are over. Go on, Ferdinando. Sugar and spice. That's what little girls are made of. Were you young ones, eh? Or not? Me? I'm shocked. Ooh, Don't, shocked! So much the worse for you, then. There's no call to frighten the no, child. No, Papa, we mustn't pretend to take this seriously. It's much more to the uh. point to see if he's eaten. Teresa, have you found him? Jerry Mai has gone to the stables to see if he's there. The child has run away, I'm convinced. Scour the garden. Notify the constable. Send out a search party. Pretend I've hurt you, you little scamp. Come on out. When did you tuck yourself away under there? Here's Guido. He's here. What have you been up to, huh? You bit me on the nose with oh, that stick. Oh, you poor pet. Yes, yes. Oh, what did you know, yeah. Did they Madam, catch him on the loose thing? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come here immediately, young fellow. For just a moment. I'd like to know how often you sweep under the furniture in this house. Never have I seen such dust. <laughs> so it's us who are to blame, is it? And why not? Do we have to arrange for young men to run away from home these days before we sweep under the beds? Weasel, what have you been up to? This is my business, Laura. I shall deal with the boy. We'd better stop the bleeding first. What a state the child's in. Recently, he's been a perfect ragamuffin. The boy's in love. The child's not well. Not well at all. Teresa, pick up this obnoxious object, soap it, brush it hard with a scrubbing brush, and put it straight to bed. Go on. Oh, dear. The child's disgusting. Tomorrow morning at 8, we'll have him taken to the country, and then we'll see. Papa. But, Papa, please. Laura. Since when have children been allowed to speak unless they're spoken to? He's nowhere to be found. Who? The young master. Oh, oh. Go on, go on, go on. Seems to me the boy should Listen, have a lot of spirit. In future... Listen? Why? Remember the time when you wrote asking me to run away with you? Uh -huh. Laura, this is quite irrelevant. If indeed I proposed such a thing, I must have been at the age of discretion. Are you sure you haven't forgotten anything, Laura? You remember no, no, last no, year. No, no, Giuseppe, no, no, no. You simply cannot put that there. Put it somewhere else. You should know by now the proper Anywhere. place for that's at the back. Here's everyone here. And good morning to you all. Good morning. That's it. Good morning, Father. Hey, I say, youngsters, perhaps I shouldn't mention, mention it. Well, aren't you a little beside yourselves this morning? Oh, Him, oh just look at you, Nando. <laughs> Where's Guido? The child shot off 30 minutes ago. It wasn't for lack of telling Jerry Meyer to keep an eye on him, but I there. did keep an eye on him. He didn't stir a step from here. No, there. Where's that? Where is Just the over there. That boy is totally undisciplined. Oh, he's gone back into the house, that's all. Oh, there. 
here you are, Guido. We're going now, dear. Mama, I don't want to go away. Oh, really, Weasel, you are a trial sometimes. I don't know what's come over you, but I need the patience of Job with you these days. We're late already. When are we getting back? Why, in October, as we usually do. You go without me. What? She'll be gone by then. What about it? I kiss my friend. Ah. Oh. And if there's a child, I'll stand by her, not oh. like the man who left the nurse in the lurch. <laughs> oh, Weasel. <laughs> Darling, we must go now. Come along. Mama! way to treat a young lady, you ought to be ashamed Ow. of yourself. What's all this? How dare you slap that boy? He's not your son. Lucky for him, he isn't. If he'd been mine, I'd have slapped him twice as hard. Why, you stupid, fat old busybody. Oh, thank you. Uh, look out for the automobile. <laughs> I'm sorry, my dear. I'll try to be as quick as I can, but I'll take at least ten minutes. Oh. Uh, would you like some magazines? No, thanks. Hey, Gerardo, what about you? Uh, aren't you coming? No, no, I'll wait. Besides, you want to leave Maria alone? No, of course not. Uh, look, if you have nothing to do, why don't you come with us to Fregene? Oh, it might be fun. Of course. Of course it'll be fun. Try and persuade him to come, mm -hmm. eh, Maria? Bye. 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 <laughs> what did I tell you? We'll be nice and cozy. And we'll be staying overnight, too, dear. Let's walk around the block, shall we? In this heat? We really could buy the magazines. Ah, but that's so dull. No matter what you buy, you pay, and then it's always the same old rubbish. Uh, pardon me, uh, this isn't the same old rubbish, a tiny little story, interesting. Uh, why don't you try it? Back already, and Andrea. I came back ahead of time. Why? Listen, Julia, I'm afraid he's found out everything. Andrea? Yes. How could he know? Did you give yourself... No, both of us, if anything. Here? Yes, the other night when we were leaving. Andrea went down first with his valise, do you remember? You were holding a candelabra, and as I went by... How could you be so careless? Did he see us? I don't know. I think he looked back. Tell me, was I still coming down when he called to you? Yes, of course. It could have been when he turned back towards the other door that he saw us... No, before that, before, before. Oh, but if he'd seen us... If he had so much as a glimpse of us... Could he have planned to let you get back first? Is it possible? Are you sure he hasn't already left? Yes, I'm positive. There are no other trains from the city before three. You'll be here in two hours. Carluccio, come here. Mr. Sarah informs me that my husband arrives today on the three o'clock train. You will take the children to their grandmothers and return here at once. Mama, is Papa coming home today? We don't know yet, dear. As soon as he comes, we'll send for you. Carluccio, don't you say good morning to Mr. Sarah? Good morning, Mr. Sarah. Hello. Let's go up. Go along now. Hurry. Bye, Mama. Bye, dear. He'll be here very soon. You understand that here we are, we don't know. It's like standing on the edge of a volcano. For heaven's sake, try to control yourself. I want to hear everything calmly. Yes, control myself. How can I? Here. Here, do you remember? Before leaving, we discussed until the very last minute that unfortunate business that had to be settled in the city. He was very excited. Yes, well? When we left the house, Andrea became silent. He walked with his head down. It was clear that he was upset about something. And he found out. After a while... With a quiet, natural voice, he said, It's true, it's sad to travel by night, to leave the house at night. He said that? Yes, then he said, It's also sad for those who remained. Ah, and then, very casually, leaving by candlelight on a staircase. He said that? Yeah. How did he say it? The same way, very simply. He also referred to the children he left sleeping upstairs, and he spoke of you, but he was looking at me. What did he say? He told me how much you loved the children. 
Look, we were both together here, and he was... So, now I can remember it exactly. Nothing else? Yes. At the hotel on the first night, he insisted we share a room with two beds. Later, after we'd been in bed for some time and the lights were out, I couldn't sleep. I think he knew it. I'm sure he did. And I lay there, not daring to move in the same room with him, terrified that he knew. Can you imagine the horror of it to lie there in the blackness, waiting, waiting for, for what? For perhaps to die? Then, after a long time, neither of us speaking, I heard him say, you're not sleeping. And you? Nothing. I didn't answer. I pretended to be asleep. Then again, he repeated, you're not asleep. And I answered, did you say something, Andrea? And he said, yes, I asked if you were sleeping. But it wasn't a question that he was asking me. He knew for certain that I'd been lying there awake. He knew that I hadn't been able to sleep. Do you understand? He knew it. That's what it meant to me. Nothing else? Nothing. I haven't slept for two nights. But all this cunning, it's not like him. But if he saw us... But suppose he didn't look back. Is it possible? Is it possible that he knows? Well, perhaps he only suspects. Even if he only suspected, he'd have acted. He can't control himself. He's so violent. He couldn't hide his feelings from me. You don't know him as I do. If he had ever had the slightest suspicion that you had even kissed me, I tell you, he would have come out with it immediately. No, no, it's not possible. You are afraid and nothing more. Afraid? You think I don't care what happens to you? All right, then. We were far too sure of ourselves. And now I realize our madness, our stupidity. And I ask myself now, how is it that he hasn't found out anything up until this very moment? I don't know how we could have been so rash as to betray ourselves so blatantly. On the staircase, in front of him, before his eyes. How could you have been so, so careless? So now I'm the one to blame for everything. I should have known. You've tortured me for months, threatened oh, me with please. suicide. You had me deceive a man who believed in me more than he did in himself. Ah, oh, yes, you're right. The fault is completely mine. No, no, I didn't mean it that way. It... Ah, yes, that's exactly what you meant. And now you can also say that I ran away from home to join him. That I practically insisted he marry me. Yes, because I loved him. And then I betrayed him with you. It's quite right that you should condemn me, absolutely right. Now that the end is near and you're suddenly afraid? I can see your fear. I know you're afraid. But if I am afraid, it's for you and your children. Now, now, don't act like this. If you think Andrea knows nothing, why worry? He doesn't know. As you said, how could he have controlled himself so well if he were aware of anything? Uh, no, he hasn't found out about us. You'll see. And so... Go. We have nothing more to say to each other. You're being unfair. Please go. As you wish. This is your great love. What do you expect of me? Nothing. It's really better to end it once and for all. No matter what happens. And I'll tell you something else. It would be better if he knew everything. You're crazy. It would be better, I tell you. And if I have the courage, I'll tell him myself. If I have the courage. Go. Go now while there's still time. I came here to take you to the station. Isn't it better if we leave now, together? No. No, it's no good. I want to be alone with him. He and I. Oh, Julia, you've come to the train. Take this, will you? Did Sarah tell you? Yes, he was at the house a while ago. He said he'd see you later. Good. Did you bring my feather pillow? Oh, that. It's not here. I must have left it in the train, careless of me. Never mind. How have you been? And the children? You left it in the train. In the train or at the hotel. It's too late now, anyway. And the children? The children are very well. They're with your mother. Good. You did well to send them there. My mother loves them very much. Did all go well? Didn't Sarah tell you about no. it? No. 
No, but he only stayed for a moment. We can say that the business is well on its way. Our cause is won. Ah, yes. He's ingenious. Sarah has intelligence. There's no doubt that he handled everything very well. Yes. And if the outcome is successful, as I believe it's going to be, when that happens, you know what I'll do? I'll liquidate everything, and without a second thought, I'll pack up and go to the city. Eh? What's the matter? Aren't you happy about it? Yes, of course, but it's a surprise. But you know that stupid ride from the station. I have an idea I'll miss it very much. Go get the children. But the master told me that... Yes, let them stay with their grandmother. I'd like to unpack first. I have some presents for them. As you wish. What is it, Andrea? Nothing. Why? Do I look tired? Tell me, do I? Don't be upset. Be happy it's over. I don't want any more trouble. We'll go to the city. I'd like to lead the life of a gentleman for a change. Enjoy myself. By the way, I'll have to sever my connections with Sarah. Uh, I'll pay him back. I've done him many favors, but that's unimportant. He's satisfied. No, no, business is business. Favors don't enter into it. He deserves them anyway. If you knew of the things he thought of to protect my rights, very effective. When they were denying I'd done anything good for the country. They don't understand. Ah, uh, yes. When it comes to being grateful to someone, they don't know how. You could see it all today from the train. They were admiring it now that it's been done. Before, they were calling me a madman. Said it was swampland. Yes, to them. But for me, it's always been a land of promise. Ever since I was a boy. How many times we talked about it in those days. Do you remember? Only you believed in it. You and me. Hello. And I didn't know how to help. What? How else would I have got started? It was your money. How can you say such a thing? It's true. If it hadn't been for you, you and the children. That's right, Andrea. It's not of myself I'm thinking. But the children. How can you abandon everything? Don't you see the struggle, the ingratitude of everyone? Oh. All of it, like my money, means nothing. It's what you've accomplished that counts. And what you've accomplished is yours and the children's. You say you've won your battle. And now, after so many years of hard work, you Julia. want to... Here it is. Excuse me, Julia. For a moment, I thought I'd forgotten... Oh, forgive me. Maybe you're right. Better to think it over before deciding. We'll talk later, eh? Now we'll have dinner. Anna! Then I'll send Anna for the children. No, wait. But they were so impatient. You promised them those toys. I have them here. They're so happy at their grandmother's and I have to work. We'll pick them up together after we've eaten. All right? Oh, you know, in town I met your brothers on two occasions. And both times... What did they do? To me, nothing. What do you expect them to do? As usual, they pretend not to know me. They can't forgive the fact that I am no longer the pauper I was once. Oh, don't pay any attention to them, Andrea. As for me, I've even forgotten the fact of their existence. Since I've known you, I've thought of nothing but us. You see, don't you like it? Yes, but I'm not hungry. But you've always enjoyed it. You don't seem to realize what I've been through. Or what it's been like. Just ask Sarah. Three hellish days. And the things they tried to do. And this. After I risked all of my money, that is yours, to reclaim the land, to drain and improve it. And after that, what happens? Then the contracts for the lease expire. And they try to deny both my credit and my profit. Then they had the effrontery to tell me, you made money. Thank you very much. I slaved for years. Moreover, to please them, I have to impoverish myself. Try and be calm, Andrea. Can't you see that you're tired? You're nervous. Rest a while. And to think they used to die of malaria by the hundreds. Where are you going? To get your room ready so you can rest. Stay here a minute. I met old Montaigne on the train. 
two of his daughters died. And his wife died of malaria. He cried when he told us about it. Imagine anybody crying over a woman with a reputation like that. <laughs> He's practically a half-wit now, poor fellow. You know he'd been beaten up? Well, he was, by his wife's lover. He told us about it himself on the train, just like that. As if it didn't concern him. <laughs> you can imagine how we laughed. Luckily, there was one of those worldly young men in the compartment. You know the type. Let me tell you what he said. May I leave now? Where are you going? On an errand for me. Go to my mother's and wait for us. Go. And we? We'll go in a minute. Let's go right away. Yes, yes, of course. Are you changing? It's not worthwhile. We won't stay long. Now listen to this. To catch them red-handed, said the young man. That's medieval, quite out of date. Our friend got beaten up, besides. The usual trick of the false departure and unexpected return, methods suitable for senile old husbands, would have you believe they'd missed their train when they've really lost their heads. Where are my keys? I always leave them here. You suspect your wife? And you want proof? What's the use of coming to blows? Eh? What's more, it's a shame to disturb two people who are enjoying each other's company. <laughs> Very amusing, don't you think? <laughs> If I were married, he said, and suspected my wife, I'd pretend I had no inkling of anything. I wouldn't worry her before I was quite sure. I wouldn't look for proof. I'd behave in such a manner, and this requires ability, that she, in her guilt, would herself provide the living proof. Incontrovertible for me to use as I wish. May I go get my shawl? It's cold. I'll get it. But let me finish the story. When the right moment arrived, he said I'd have a talk with my wife and I'd tell her a little story. One of those vulgar love affairs in which the wife is guilty, entangling her in a subtle net, even tighter, until suddenly you hold a looking glass up to her face and say in a kindly voice, My dear, why have you turned so pale? <laughs> Very amusing. Hold that light. While I look for the keys. I must have lost them near the front door. I've been boring you, haven't I? You're not interested. What's so interesting about it? Montaigne's wife, perhaps? Well, then, Sarah, come along. Well, then, we'll talk about Sarah. Hold the light closer. I'll say, listen, Sarah, this is rather embarrassing for me. We're friends. Tell me, please tell me what you want, and I'll give it to you. What do you think? Do whatever you think best. The only thing is, I'm afraid on that basis... He'll refuse. Conscience, my dear, can make a man particular, yes. Having deprived me of my honor, he'll refuse my money. What did you say? It's true, isn't it? Oh, Andrea. I saw you myself. Do you understand? With my own eyes. Little of you there, and I here. Oh. Do you dare to deny it? It's in your eyes. Now you're terrified, aren't you? Just like him. Just like Sarah. I tortured him for three whole days. Then he ran away. He couldn't stand it. He came to tell you, didn't he? He came and told you. I let him go first purposely. So why didn't you go away with him? Why not? No. Why not? Oh, no, 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 Andre. Do what you will with me, but, but don't insult me like this. I eloped with you. I would have done anything you wanted because I loved you. But only to deceive me. But no. Just because I was the first man you saw. No. You would have done the same with whoever had come along. No, that's not true. I didn't realize what was happening. Now I know it was wrong. But please, try to understand. I ran away with you because I was in love. And not because I wanted all this wealth and, and this fine house. I had more than I needed before I came to you. But your pride and your conscience drove you to make up for all the sacrifice I'd made for you. 
All you thought of was work, work, and more work. What of me? What of me? All you ever asked of me was my admiration for your courage and my gratitude. That from me, who waited day in and day out impatiently for you to return. And when you did come home, it would be to work, always late into the night. I needed your love and your tenderness. I got only silence in their place. It's wonderful to have respect and faith, but there comes a time when these very things become an insult to a woman in love. I was tired. Yes, of everything. And he took advantage of it. You consider that justification? No, 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 Andre. I tell you this because I... Well, then get out. Go to your lover if you want. You can take your money with you. I'll give it all back to you. I'll start all over again for my children. Oh. Don't say such terrible things. Forgive me, I implore you. I promise you that I shall never look you in the face again, but let me stay for the children's sake. No. I beg of you. No. Oh. Andre, I ask you for the last time. I told you no. I never want to see you again or to hear your voice again. The children are mine, mine, and they'll remain with me. You understand? I implore you, just look like this. You shall never see them again. Not even to say goodbye. No. Just once more. Only to kiss them, my children, for the last time. Please. No. Oh, my God, my God, how cruel you are. Well, then, kill me. Why don't you kill me? Kill me, kill me, kill me! I... Look. Look there. Children. I told him to come here. That's where I sent Anna. Oh, Andrea. Get out. Go join your lover. Go away with him. Why are you waiting? Are you afraid for him? Oh. Goodbye, Andrea. Set to go to Virginia? No, I'm afraid I haven't time. But you said you had plenty of time. Yes, but I've just remembered. Yes, he remembered. He'd forgotten. You understand? No. Yes, so we'll make it some other time. I'll see you later. Well. Yes. Oh, oh those wretched children again. Oh, where did that ball go? Those kids. Uh, did you hurt yourself? Ah, I'll take that ball. I'll get it. Come on, give me my no, ball. Get away, get away. I want my ball. No, you won't get it until you pick up these papers. No. Yes, if you don't, you won't get your ball back. Madam, can't you tell him to pick up this stuff? It isn't my stuff. Why should I? Then I'm mine. Quite right. Hey. Quite right. Everybody must pick up his own stuff. Here. Nosy old busybody. Oh. I'm sorry. Oh, well, never mind. Oh, look at this. See what I found. Know who they are? It's grandfather and grandmother, the day they were married in oh, Venice. How beautiful. <laughs>
ogni sera di sotto al mio balcone sento cantare una canzone d'amore più volte la ripete un bel garzone e battere mi sento forte il cuore e battere mi sento forte il cuore oh quanto è dolce quella melodia oh come è bella quanto me è tradita che io la canti non voglio mamma mia vorrei saper perché me l'ha proibita ella non c'è ed io lo cantar la frase che m'ha fatto palpita Vorrei baciare i tuoi capelli neri, le labbra tue e gli occhi tuoi sveri. Stringi mio cuore, stringi mio il tuo cuore.
cuore sento in me un gran desio che m'assale è una spina d'amor che mi sento nel cuore io sogno e voglio per me nel sognare lo amo e pare di tenerlo al mio seno vicino lo stringo così l'adorato mio bene e bra son di voluttà mio volice amore fammi godere fammi trovare un immenso piacere baciami, baciami, baciami bene baciami e fammi godere con me Dai capelli tuoi bruni morati, dei tuoi baci il bruciore, tutti pieni d'amore, sento nel cuore palpitar, la tua voce ha un bel suono, deliziosa, sei dolce, armoniosa, il tuo sguardo è splendor che ferisce ogni cuore, alle per te son d'amore, ah, mio dolce amore, fammi godere. Fammi trovare un immenso piacere, baciami, baciami, baciami bene, baciami e fammi godere con me. Mio dolce amore, fammi godere, fammi trovare un immenso piacere, baciami, baciami, baciami bene, voglio godere con me. Put it as soon here. It's nothing. So long. <laughs> Sit down, please. Thanks a lot. But I'm afraid it's getting on towards closing time. Yes, but not till you've taken a look at this. Uh -huh. Do you remember this? What is it? Oh, it's the trial of Freene. <laughs> right, the trial of Freene. You've got to read this before you back up. No, 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 there's no more room. Oh, Pino. Don Pietro, where are you going? Oh, 
right. You can. It's full on. But what's that got to do with me? I'm an attorney. Of course you are. Everybody knows that. Uh-huh. The attorney appointed by the court. Ah. <laughs> no, me. excuse me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me pass. They're all waiting Dan for Pietro. me. But, Dan Pietro, you can't get in. Oh, There's no room. I've been Not appointed. Even for I'm the, uh, uh, But it's full up. <laughs> ah, at last client for you. Congratulations, Dr. Yes, you. Congratulations. Go right in the defense. Go right in. Shh. Be quiet now. Be quiet. Good morning. Good morning. May I present my apologies to this honorable court? Accepted. I mean to say that I just received the, um, uh, uh... Here we go. Please sit down, Don Pietro. I am profoundly mortified to be so Don late, Don Pietro, we beg you to sit down. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, do you think I could take a look at the indictment? Uh, Your Honor, I ask a thousand pardons. I've already excused you. But I must admit that if I'm called to defend someone, it's natural that I should... Court appointed. Mr. Attorney, court appointed. You should know what that means. (sighs) Yes, yes, of course, pro form. I appreciate that. But you see, if I'm called at the last minute... Because until the last minute, all of us fervently hoped we should not have to disturb you. Ah. But unfortunately, all the others refused. And so you see, at the last minute, there... You called me. (laughs) I thank you, Your Honor. Well, in any case, Your Honor, as the uh, ancient Greeks used to say, the future is in the lap of the gods. Oh, please, don't start with the Greeks again. You may address the court when I shall so direct. And we sincerely hope that you will be briefer than usual, eh? (laughs) (laughs) Pasquale Procida. Your Honor, I'm a druggist who places his conscience before profit. A fine sort of conscience. You hand out poison as easily as if it were bicarbonate. Only rat poison, Your Honor, rat poison. I myself, with my own hands, put it into the cheese. Grated cheese. What you did was to sprinkle arsenic, a handful, all over a dish of cheese that had already been grated. Of course. We all know that rats like their macaroni highly seasoned. (laughs) (laughs) How could I have known, Your Honor, that I... I Because you were thoroughly and completely bewitched at the time you committed the infamous deed. And the proof? Why, you put in enough arsenic to destroy a whole herd of elephants. What was the price for this act of criminal complicity? Price, Your Honor? I never received a single penny that... You didn't uh, receive even a single penny, eh? uh, But what was it that you asked for? uh, 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 Yes, when you shut the door of your shop. Just to keep out the sun, and I left it a little ajar, you know. Ajar? It was locked and bolted. You admitted that at the inquest. Your Honor, most unfortunately, I've mislaid my eyeglasses. I sent for them an hour ago. However, I seem to remember reading in the indictment a statement to the effect that the witness had for some time past been pestering the defendant. Would it not be opportune to ask the defendant herself what was the behavior of the witness when, having locked the door, he agreed to sprinkle the arsenic on the dish full of grated cheese, eh? Marie Antonia Desideri, have you heard the question? Uh, Yes, sir. What question? The question put by the public prosecutor. Excuse me, what did you say? No, no, that's the defense attorney. The public prosecutor is that gentleman there. And he asked you about the behavior of the witness, the druggist here, when he asked you for the poison. Well, as you can imagine, he's been after me ever since I can remember. And did you give in to his advances? Oh, I couldn't. Why not? Well, how could I? He's exactly like my husband. Uh, Your Honor, I, I, why, Your Honor, call the husband of the defendant. (laughs) Are you Jeteo Desideri? Jeteo, yes. Do you know this woman? Yes, she's my wife. (laughs) Yes, of course, your wife. And did your wife fail in her duties? Uh, in her fidelity as a wife. Oh, the man's an idiot. Uh, did she have lovers? Lovers? Did she ever make you a cuckold? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> My mother always said she did. But you didn't notice it yourself? Uh, it, it was when it was my, 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 my mother, my mother, my mother who, 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 say, who said to me that she had been with, with uh, Chick Antonio. My mother, my mother said also she, she uh, was with Pasquale Scoteca. Uh, 
she, she also also was with 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 uh, Donati Cheche. Every evening she said she was always with somebody. Uh, you admit the truth of what your husband says? And why not, Your Honor? Every evening, she told him stories that made my head burst. It oh. was unbearable. Oh. And is that why you put the poison in her cheek? I object, Your Honor. The question is, uh... Mm. Leading? Uh, leading, of course. Mr. Attorney, would you do us the favor? And, sir, was that the reason that you gave the poison to your mother-in-law? I? I didn't give her anything. I put a little tiny sprinkle of cheese with the rat poison on the macaroni made with oil. On the macaroni made with peppers, I didn't put any at all. I said to myself, if this woman who makes me so miserable wants the dish with the peppers, it's a sign that I shall have to put up with her nagging. But if she takes the one with the oil, it means that I've put up with her long enough and she should be punished. Eh? Punished? But why punished? Your Honor, that woman made my life a complete hell with no reason at all. What do you mean with no reason? Why, you yourself just admitted that... that uh, uh, Call the witnesses. The first witness. First witness. The first witness. Hey, let's have the first one. The first one. <laughs> and who knows who the first one was? The first in line, Pasquale Spatoka. Come along. Oh, that's me. <laughs> Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth. The whole truth? Your Honor, but how could I? There are ladies present here. You couldn't even begin to imagine what... How dare you! How dare you! Just where do you think you are? You must restrict yourself to answering the questions that are put to you. Yes, sir, Your Honor. If you like, we could meet in a cafe. I could tell you everything there. Have you gone out of your mind? We're in court. And it's just because we're in court that I invited you to the cafe, you understand, Your Honor? Then we would be freer. We could talk, eh? Silence! That's enough! Get out! <laughs> Mr. Justice, Your Honor... I was ringing the church bells. I saw her at the door of the sacristy with all the sun in her face, and she looked at me and smiled. And that day... Oh. Go on. Uh, then. And that day, the way I rang those bells for the feast day, they never sounded that way before or since. No, Maria Antonia never said nothing to me. And you? I never said nothing either. You never talked to each other? Well, what was there to talk about, Your Honor? <laughs> Why would we need to talk? Do you know what I mean? Such a good woman. So good and so very simple. She was always asking after my mother, my wife, and my children. A woman, Your Honor, whose only purpose in life was affection, sentiment, and Poor love. Woman. After all, I've been watching her attentively. I think she must be really good. Her well, life, life. And then that husband. Suppose she were my daughter. <laughs> Are you the mayor of the village of the defendant? I am, Your Honor. Let us hope that by your testimony you will restore to this high court of law some measure of decorum and dignity. As soon as I heard of, how shall we say, ah, oh, well, let us say, the activities of the defendant, I considered it my duty to summon her to the town hall to find out for myself how much truth there was in the gossip about her conduct. Well, Your Honor, it became very clear to me that this gossip was only too well founded. Silence! Your Honor, would the witness explain to the court why he continued to summon, as he says, uh, the, um... Uh, yes, I quite understand what you mean. I, Did you hear him? Because I felt that I must allay further much graver doubts. I had to have concrete proof of her. Uh, uh, so I sent for Maria Antonia several times. But unhappily, Your Honor... I had only further proof of... Yes, yes, that will do. You may go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You may step down. <laughs> Maria Antonia, do you confirm what the witnesses have said? Why, yes, Your Honor. <laughs> How many are there left? How, how many do you recognize of those? You understand me. Take your choice, Your Honor. I know all of them. Be quiet. Unbelievable. But, pardon me, my dear girl. Did you say yes to everyone? Well, Your Honor, they were all so sweet. Oh, how could I say no? This is too much. I don't think she's sincere, so I'm obviously sincere. Silence! Leave 
continual interruptions breaks the psychological continuity of the judicial proceedings of this court. Mm. My child, I sincerely hope that my ears are deceiving me. But excuse me. Now supposing, strictly hypothetically, of course, if I, a doctor of jurisprudence, and unfortunately of riper years, mature, mm. if I, with these old wrinkles, mm. this white hair, should try, mm. try to suggest mm. to you I mean to say, uh... Well, Your Honor, if you were truly sincere, uh... <laughs> we shall now hear the public prosecutor. Your Honor, gentlemen of the court, I regret and present my humblest apologies. A moment's forgetfulness has made it impossible for me to read the statements which I had so carefully prepared, which prove the atrocious crimes of the defendants. However, the last veil of Your doubt Honor, has been torn asunder regarding glasses. the crime, ah. the guilt, and the penalty. Imprisonment for life must forever guarantee the removal of this monstrous creature from our sight. <laughs> Give it to him now. Sir, your eyeglasses. Uh huh. Now we'll see. Nothing to say. Look at him. Now, this is a new <laughs> man. Well, then, let us now proceed and listen to the. Mr. President, Mr. President, eh? It's really too bad for that poor young girl to turn her over to that nincompoop. But what can we do about it? He's got to defend her. It's the law. Terrible. Huh? It's like leading a lamb to the slaughter. Eh? Yes, how true. But her crime is heinous. And so, let us hear the defense. Don't, Pietro, forget about it. The poor girl is in such a pickle already. Yeah. Mr. Attorney, oh, have mercy on her. Do us this the favor. The defense has to speak. Yes. Let him ruin her. Yes, sir. The defense must be heard. What defense? <laughs> Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Your Honor, gentlemen of the court, gentlemen of... Uh, We're off to a good uh, start. The jury. Oh, thank you. Gentlemen of the jury. My colleague for the prosecution is right, perfectly right. The crime was committed, the defendant has confessed. I cannot and I shall not make any attempt to say even one brief word in her defense. San Pietro, I find you looking a little pale. Are you feeling quite all right? Don't hesitate to ask to be relieved. No, 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 no. I shall not defend the defendant, but I must defend you, gentlemen of the court, from the danger of pronouncing too lenient a sentence according to our law. Uh, according to, according to our moral code, because according to our law, this woman must be condemned to imprisonment. For life. Forever. But... Gentlemen of the court, and gentlemen of the public, there was once upon a time, and there is even now, a different moral code, another law, the law, the law of beauty. Beauty that is forever incarnate in what was the most perfect of all things created for all time. Woman! How to approach a woman, to understand a woman, to admire a woman. That is what our morals and our laws no longer teach us. But ask your own splendid wives, ask all these gorgeous, beautiful women who are here present. Ask them if the beauty of a woman can ever hide a malevolent nature, and they will answer with one voice. No! <laughs> He's charming. Indeed. And while I speak to you about, um, about, um... Maria Antonia. Maria Antonia. Maria, Maria Antonia, thank you. To attempt to understand her, to interpret her, requires a mind dedicated to the comprehension and interpretation of all women, and especially your ladies here present. But let us consider together the guilt of Mary Antonia. This transgression of Mary Antonia must be considered as of almost infinitesimal proportions when compared with the allegorical and mystical influence that she as a woman 
exercises over us. Bravo, Don Pietro. Uh, uh, thank you. But you may not touch one jot or tittle of the law. You must condemn her to imprisonment for life. Gentlemen, consider carefully. Imprisonment for life. The law prescribes a sentence whereby she shall be shut away for all eternity. Far from the sight of all of you, far from the sight of all mankind. A woman in whom is incarnate the beauty of our own glorious Naples. Our springtime. Of our Vesuvius, <laughs> Maria Antonia. Yes, Your Honor, Maria Antonia. Best assured that this entire court stands ready to help you. Thank you. As I was saying, Maria Antonia is a very part of our landscape, like the mountains, lakes, rivers. Condemn her, and you will shut away behind bars that which is the most essential of our incomparable attractions. Ah, what would the tourists say of us? If we should presume to imprison Vesuvius! Let him be the mother that bore you! And yet you must do it. You must imprison Vesuvius. For so wills our jurisprudence. Ah, what a difference. Between this, our justice, and the justice of the Greeks. Uh, Your Honor, would I be out of order if I speak of the ancient Greeks? Absolutely not, Don Pietro. Go right ahead. Why, the ancient Greeks were the teachers of humanity. <laughs> and you then shall be our teacher. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Your Honor. The Greek tribunal was situated on the most beautiful hill of all Athens. While here we are shut in this hall, dusty, crowded, dark, and so evil smelling. Whereas the Heliastai, the Greek judges, Men whose minds were open to every greatness sat in council upon slabs of marble, not on broken down, disgusting, undignified wooden benches like those upon which you sit. And if it should come about that beauty were called upon to appear in the prisoner's dock, how far superior was their forensic skill and their judgment? Farine! Farine! Who amongst you has ever heard that name? Frina was a woman of Greece. Frina was Maria Antonia, because Frina was beauty incarnate. Step out, Maria Antonia, step out, uh, uh, make room. Hyperides, my illustrious predecessor, led Frina's soul to the center of the tribunal where she was to be judged for crimes compared with which those of Maria Antonia <laughs> a mere child's play. Get up there, Maria Antonia. Look at her. Look at her! And do you know how the great Hyperides defended her before the awful judges of Greece? Only a tunic! Uh, 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 only a tunic! Hid the truly stupendous form of that magnificent creature from the eyes of the judges! A simple tunic! You follow me, Your Honor? Yes, I must uh, Yes, indeed. Uh, uh, and then with one gesture, he ripped it off! Voila! Oh, oh your lordship! <laughs> and so, the worthy judges who had already turned down their thumbs, thumbs downward, the sign of condemnation, found themselves with their thumbs turned upwards in the gesture of acquittal. And Mary Antonia, the verb uh, Freena, was acquitted. Acquitted! And if today, in this little miserable squalid courtroom, I am unable to repeat the gesture of Hyperides, the fault lies not with Maria Antonia. No, the fault is not mine, but the fault is yours, the fault of your sterile laws. Sterile laws? Or are we sterile, who know so little how to interpret them? Yeah, huh? Because the law requires us, on the one hand, to... to, uh, uh, to understand, uh, no, to justify, no, to save, no, to render judgment, no, to acquit, no, to condemn the woman to imprisonment for life. But on the other hand, does not this very same law prescribe the acquittal of the underdeveloped mentally? Therefore, I ask, should it not prescribe the acquittal of those who are overdeveloped physically, as represented here by this superb and amazing creature! Yeah. 
And in consideration of paragraphs A and B of Article 220, and in application of the opinions and regulations regarding the knowledge of right and wrong in the commission of actions, this court finds the defendant Marie Antonia Desideri guilty as charged and condemns her to 24... to 24 months of detention in the common jail. Of which months, 22 were abrogated by the recent decree of amnesty. While the remaining two months of the term have been more than amply served. This court therefore orders her immediate discharge from custody. Mr. Hey! 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 Kearney! <laughs> Wonderful! Dear hey, friends, you were magnificent! Thank you, Pedro! Pedro. Oh, you're right. Oh, Pedro, do oh, Pedro! What would the world do without Zoe? <laughs> No, Your Honor. Without, uh... uh. <laughs> <laughs>